Leather Mysterio is present behind the screen. So, lately I've been going through a uh, rewatch, I guess, or watch through for, uh, for the first time for some of some Hartnell stories. I've just been going on a bit of a Hartnell marathon. And obviously Hartnell's era is the 60s, so there's a lot of missing episodes there. Obviously some missing episodes have been reconstructed using animation. So when I got to the 10th planet, I thought, I know, I haven't watched the Power of the Daleks animation yet. I've got the Blu-ray, I need to watch it. I'll watch the 10th planet and Power of the Daleks back to back and see how the animation sort of blends in with the the first three episodes of the 10th planet being real footage and stuff. And it get, and it raised an interesting topic in my head of different types of animation that have been done for the missing episodes Um you know, the earliest ones being the invasion, and of course the Ice Warriors, Reign of Terror, <laughs> Reign of Terror, Moonbase, and Tenth Planet. And this video is just going to be talking about the different types of anime, the different animations, which one's probably the best and the worst, uh, and potential for more animation in the future. So, so far, four companies have taken up the mantle of animating these business episodes, those being Curious, Planet 55, the BBC Worldwide, and Cosgrove Hall. And the first one to ever be animated was The Invasion. Uh, so, just put these down here a sec. Was The Invasion. And uh, this was quite a big deal at the time because, obviously it has the sticker on there, um, an anima uh, animated reconstruction of the missing episodes had never really been done before. In fact, on the stills at the back, one of those stills is from the animated version there. And and this was a big selling point of this DVD, and now in retrospect on a lot on the Planet Fifty Five animations, the animation for Asian does get a lot of hate now nowadays, because it's a very bog standard cheap flash animation with not a lot of movement or detail, but I like that. Uh, I quite like the animation style. I think the likeness to Triton. A lot of people say he looks really fat. I actually think he looks quite good in it. Um, it does its job. Yes, it's not going to set anyone's world on fire, but I actually think people, for a first attempt by Cosgrove Hall at an animation of a missing episode, I actually think it's it's a it's a noble attempt to do it. I think people need to kind of stop hating on the animation in this one because it's a, at the end of the day, it's only one and four that are animated in this as well. So it's not that the whole story is animated. Uh, so even if you don't like the style. You know the other six episodes is yeah the other six episodes are still surviving. I think you can manage. So after the invasion, the second effort uh, at animation, Planet Fifty Five was brought on, and thus the golden age of animation for the the Doctor Who missing episodes was born. With the Reign of Terror, ironically featuring my least favorite animation of the lot. Not a great start for Planet Fifty Five. It says on here this special DVD release. Contains the original episodes 1, 2, 3 and 6 plus brand new episode animated versions of episodes 4 and 5 currently missing. Why do I think this animation is so bad? Well, it's like it's on crack cocaine. Every second it cuts. It's like it's it's like it's cut, 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 cut every five seconds. And it's just that's not. No, what? I don't know. I don't like that. It's just. It's very distracting, it's not fun to watch at all. Combine that with the fact that the characters' likenesses flip-flop all the time. You could go from one shot of Barbara looking a lot like Jacqueline Hill, and then another shot and she looks like somebody completely different. Um, it's just a very... It's, it's very, very, very rushed. Well, it's not even rushed. It's just very... It's not fun to watch at all. It's not... I would. Ne I don't like the Reign of Terror anyway. I know. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people love it. I tried to watch it. It just bored me, honestly. And the animation really did not help. I think by episodes four and five, I just completely lost interest in the story, and I think that's dipped down to the animation. So, not a good start for old Planet Fifty Five there. So next up, we have the Ice Warriors, which was animated by Curious Entertainment. I'm very iffy on the Ice Warriors as it is. It's not a story I particularly enjoy. This animation probably gets the most hate out of the lot of them. And I wonder why that is. Probably because it's go it goes for a more stylized look. And the movement is much more 
fluid. Like the characters come on and their arms move like r- real, like they're they're smooth and and uh, and fluid. Unlike say the Planet Fifty Five animations where it's sort of more static and 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 like that. And honestly. I don't mind that. I know a lot of people say, oh, they should look as, as close to the actors as possible. And I can see that argument, but I actually think taking a stylized right with it actually quite helps with this because it, it it makes the animation feel like its own thing. It doesn't necessarily... It doesn't take away from the story much. Um, and yes, the animation could have been done better on this, but I just think, like... It's not really that bad to sometimes do just a more stylized version rather than an exact recreation, which I'm going to get on later when I come to the best animation of the art, which is my favourite one. Because there's this... There's an argument and a debate which I think I'm going to raise there. So I don't mind the Ice Warriors animation. I know a lot of people hate it, but it's always one that I've been quite positive towards. And now... My favourite animation, crossed with the next one after this, I think. We have the 10th planet, Hartnell's last story, and I have to say one of my favourite stories of his run. I love the 10th planet. Uh, it's, a, it's such a good story. And when the animated episode 4 came around, I took it as it is. I just... Honestly, after five minutes, I forgot I was watching an animated thing because it blends in so well with the live-action episodes. It's not. It doesn't look live action by any means, but I for, I just it didn't distract like some story. I I can. I'm always like oh can't wait to get back to the surviving episodes. This is I, I this is a bit hard to watch. Tenth Planet. It's part of the story as far as I'm concerned. It's I would love to see an episode four, find, but the animation is so good, and it's because they didn't they got creative with it, trying to stick so closely to the missing episodes hinders the creativity I think and that's why sometimes we get subpar animation and I think there's a lot of potential for animation to reconstruct missing episodes and I think because sometimes the BBC go right you've got to stick so closely to the original script um, and you've got to stick so closely to what we know happened it can hinder that creativity and in the 10th planet they, they're so creative with the shots and everything. Like when the Cybermen walk in, there's close-ups of their eyes and stuff. And it's like, you know that that's not the camera shot that would have happened in the 60s. It's, it's far too complex and it's far too modern. But it just adds so much to the story. And yeah, I just, I really feel like that's the way to go forward with the animations is get creative with it and just provide us with a good anima- animation before a good recreation. And I know that's that sounds bad. I, I want a recreation too. But if we're going the animated route. I think the best path to take. Is a more stylized creative route. Rather than a more exact recreation of the lost material. And that can extend to the moon base as well. Because it's the same team. Planet 55 on a roll here. So good that which episodes are animated for the moon base? I think it's one and three, isn't it? Yeah, one and three. And the way the side men move, they've got this. This is my favorite side man design in the first place. But they've got this uh, this shadows over them and this the, how they how they walk and stuff, which is actually quite accurate to the to the story. But again, they take a more creative route with it. And while I don't think it's as good as the Tenth Planet, because in the Tenth Planet, some of the shots they do is just great. But the Moon Base is definitely my second favourite. I just these two are easily the best animations. These are the sort of the pinnacle we've got of the animations. And I think if anyone, if another company takes on the animation mantle, these are the ones they should look to for inspiration. Because as I say, they're so creative. They didn't aim to try and make. Uh, exact down to the ground recreation and I think that's where they succeed and now of course we're here with the entirety episode 1 to 6 of Power of the Daleks being lovingly recreated by the BBC's animation and yes okay here's where the problems start showing up 
I am so glad we've got power. I am so, so glad we've got power, and I love the fact that it's been animated, and actually I think the animation isn't bad. The problem that lies here is they weren't given far... Because you've got to remember, sometimes the anima animation is weak on these because they weren't given time. They were given no money and a strict deadline to keep to to get it out on the shelves by Christmas or by November or by August or whatever. They have a strict deadline to keep to, which means they have to cut corners. And I think that's what happened with Power because they wanted to get it out for the obviously 50th anniversary of the story, which is fair enough. You want to get it out for the 50th anniversary. But I feel like more time could have done this the world of good because sometimes it is a bit hard to watch. There's a lot of sequences where you can hear things in the background that just aren't animated here, such as the Daleks rolling along the floor, not animated, they're just standing there looking around. There are a lot of awkward pauses in the animation where clearly an actor is supposed to be doing something there and the animated character is just sort of going... and just sort of moving their arms up and down or, or blinking and stuff, when you can hear stuff going on, which is unfortunate. Having said that, the Daleks look fantastic. The CGI they've used is just excellent. And I actually really enjoyed the colour version. I didn't think I would, but, you know, I actually... It's a new look at the story. Um, it's, again, trying to be creative and stuff. And I think trying to be creative was lost on this. This is one of the uh, another one where they've sort of straight up tried to recreate it. Oh, look at that, it's whiting out. It looks like we've just got a white bit of paper or something. There we go. Um, I think they, they, this was the one, this was another one where they tried to do a more accurate uh, recreation and they probably should have gone a bit more stylized. Yes, Patrick Chayton looks like Nigel Farage in it. Um, but, you know, I really admire what they tried to do. It was clearly a labour of love. Yes, the animation isn't great. But if this is the sta if they're going to do more missing episodes with this style of animation, I'm fine with it because it's a d it's probably like it's not up to Planet Fifty Five, but it's not as low as the as the Planet Fifty Five of the Reign of Terror. It's a decent animation. It's fine. You can watch it easily. I just think more time could have worked. Could have done this the world good. But as as it is, I'm really happy we've got power. And if they're going to do more. In this style, in this exact style, changing nothing, I I'd be fine with that to be honest, because it means we can view these these missing episodes easily, and without having to watch telly snap reconstructions, which I don't know about you, I find really hard work. So yes, animations, basically, be creative with them. Don't try and do an exact uh, recreation. Just be a bit creative, and you know, animation just has a lot of potential of how how we can recreate. Uh, you know, missing episodes. I would love someone to attempt a CGI recreation one day. I don't think that'll happen, though, because that would be hella expensive, and the BBC just are not going to spend that kind of money. And I think that's where the downfalls come, is because the BBC are not prepared to spend that kind of money. And I just think if these animation companies had all the money in the world, we'd have great animations. But as it is, I'm really happy with what, we, what we've got, and I'm looking forward to more animations if they're coming in the future. What do you think of the missing episode of animations? Do you like them? Which is your favourite or your least favourite? Comment below. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next one. Take care now.